Good morning, everyone. It is Sunday and just getting started on day four, about 6.45 in the morning, and I am at mile zero. Um, in the background here, there is a, uh, I'm just walking by at the beginning of the trail here, a bad house um, here at the uh, campground. And uh, had a little difficult time sleeping last night, which I always do usually when you're staying in a campground with a lot of other people. Um, sometimes it gets quite noisy. Um, so anyway, finally got to sleep and got up about 4 a.m., packed up and uh, had a good breakfast, a couple cups of coffee, and ready to hit the trail. Um, looking at the map today, it's um, I was pleasantly surprised. It looks like it's only about um, between 9 and 10 miles up to the 88 store from here. Um, don't know why I was thinking it was 15 miles, so that was a pleasant surprise. So Anyway, I will um, see you in a bit. Good morning. This is a two mile check in. It's about 11, uh, I'm sorry, about uh, 7.45 in the morning and about two miles north of uh, Hopkins Prairie Campground. Don't know what I was thinking, but the uh, GPS this morning was showing nine, nine, a little over nine miles to the 88 store. Once I got into a couple miles on the trail here, uh, it's actually going to be another 11 miles from here. So about a 13, 13, 14 mile day today. So a little further than what I thought. The uh, trail outside of uh, the camp was is just absolutely gorgeous. I uh, don't know if you can see this, but it's just huge, huge, vast fields of uh, lakes and ponds and, and um, fields. So it's pretty cool. Uh, compared to the trail south of here, which is um, a lot of um, um, forest. So this has been completely open. It's overcast, so um, that worked out perfect right now. There's no sun. Uh, if you were going through here, um, when the sun's out, um, it could uh, I could see where it would get a little bit hot. So anyway, um, pretty cool. Um, just getting up every day and walking about the only thing you have to worry about for the day is your water and food and shelter at the end of the day. Uh, so it's relatively simple uh, concept. I do see why people get excited about going into trail towns um, after about four or five days. Um, I think I was finally starting to smell myself yesterday. Um, you typically wear the same hiking clothes every day. I do like to change into clean clothes at the end of the day um, when I go to bed, but um, every day you get up, you put your regular hiking clothes on, so it, um, I'm sure it gets a little stinky after a while. But I could see uh, why every four or five days everyone really enjoys going into a trail town to eat some food um, that they don't have with them and um, sometimes take a shower, sometimes get a hotel, sleep in a normal bed. So, again, pretty cool. Enjoying it. Check in a little bit later. Bye-bye. Good morning. This is a five-mile check-in. It's about 9 o'clock in the morning. I have about 8.7 miles to the 88 store, so making progress. I think I mentioned earlier that the one of the experiments this weekend was to um, record using the new iPhone uh, 13 Pro Max and use the uh, LumaFusion software, editing software. And so what I've seen so far, it's gonna work out really well. Um, that should enable me to uh, be able to record on the Colorado Trail daily, do videos at the end of the day if I can, and uh, upload them whenever I get internet connection or um, get into town. So that should work out really well. But this will, um, this will help speed up the process and, and uh, enable us to, to do that. One of the other things that I've noticed this weekend is when you're, when you are trying to do this, I think it's um, helpful, especially when you're by yourself, um, gives you something to think about um, when you want to record um, what you want to do in between those record uh, buttons. Um, you know, what do you want to show? What do you want to say? So it really makes you think. Um, gives you something to think about, kind of passes time, uh, passes miles, and I think it helps out in that regard. So anyway, I think that's about it for the five mile. Uh, it's been a really nice walk so far. Uh, four and a half miles was um, around a huge giant um, field, lakes and ponds in it. It was really, really cool. 
And so back into the uh, forest right now and uh, heading north. So check in a little later. Bye-bye. Hello, this is a eight mile check-in. It's about 10.30 in the morning and about 5.7 miles from the um, 88 store. So I wanted to uh, expand a little bit on the vlogging topic that I was talking about earlier and talk a little bit about why we do this. Um, I guess the main reason is a lot of the stuff that we do is outside of our comfort zone. And we do like recording it so that we can watch it, also record it for our, our uh, family, friends, and any subscribers that we have out there. Probably also gives our son something to um, hold on to when we're long gone and look back and see how crazy his parents were. We know we're not going to be big YouTube stars by doing this. I think everyone knows that, right? Um, we do hope, though, and we, we've noticed that sometimes you do have an influence on people where kind of get them to um, maybe get off the couch, get out and try some new things, whether it's just walking, you know, taking a day hike in the woods, even doing a backpacking trip, uh, kayaking, just anything to get outdoors and um, get off the couch uh, is a good thing. We've had some comments in the past where people have made a comment where they've gone to one of the uh, trails that we've highlighted and that they enjoyed it or they took one of the trails and they actually got lost. So it's kind of rewarding to uh, see sometimes that you kind of motivate people to go try something that might also be a little bit outside of their comfort zone too. So that's kind of why we do it. Hello, this is a uh, 10 mile check-in. It's about 11.18 in the morning and I have about 3.8 miles to um, the 88 store. So I know I said in a, one of the earlier videos that I was going to go over a list of some of the items that I've swapped out for some lighter gear. And I'm not one of the ultralight fanatics where everything has to be super ultralight. And I'm sure that some could go through my pack and find many things to even lighten it further. But it seems like as you get older, you have to figure out ways to, to lighten your pack within reason. Um, it's a balancing act. Um, between comfort, I guess, and uh, lightness. And I'm not one that could go out with a tarp, for example. I like my Z-Pax duplex uh, for a shelter. Um, I also am not one that could cold soak, is another example. I do like the stove, I do like hot food, I do like coffee in the morning, hot coffee. So, you know, it's always a balancing act. And I didn't get a chance to go over those items that I swapped out, but I'll put a link in each of the videos in the description for the um, link to Lighter Pack where I have my Colorado gear list. And it'll have all the items listed out on it. I'm just trying to do this from memory, but some of the bigger items that I swapped out was, um, a lot of it was clothing and um, cold gear clothing. I did swap out my 250 uh, Smart Wool base layer for a 150 just to uh, reduce the weight a little bit and I uh, picked up the um, uh, ghost whisper for a puffy jacket um, swapped out the raincoat for the enlightened equipment um, visp rain jacket uh, z-pax rain pants just uh, items like that some of the spare clothing that I'm going to take along um, I found some really lightweight uh, alternatives for like shorts and, and uh, shirt. I did pick up Mountain Gear um, sun hoodie uh, to wear as a spare, spare clothing and it's very lightweight. So that's kind of the logic that I went through. And so far there's not really anything that I would change. Everything worked out perfect. The only item that I still need to think about or figure out is I did also pick up the Z-Pax um, pillow. Um, it's a stuff sack where you put your clothes in it, and then you can also um, multi-purpose use it as a pillow. And I've had issues with the Sum uh, Summit um, blow-up pillow that I've been using in the past. So I um, tr tried the Z-Pax this weekend, and um, I, I, I liked it much better from a sleep perspective, but I had some issues with trying to get it packed, so I need to figure that out. 
Uh, it's big, it's bulky when I get it loaded up with clothes. Um, so I'm not sure I need to do some research and see how people really use that. I don't know if they just stuff their clothes in their pack and then stuff the clothes in the pillow at the camp. Not really sure how to do that, but that's one, uh, one item that I need to check out. Also, the uh, new toothpaste that I picked up, uh, I didn't care for from, uh, I think it was Lightsmith, but it was the uh, tablets um, that you're supposed to put in and it's supposed to foam. You're supposed to be able to uh, brush your teeth with it. It really didn't work that way for me anyway. Um, it just felt like you're putting a breath mint in your mouth and still brushing your teeth with, with basically nothing. So I need to probably research that a little bit, try to find something else out there, maybe instead of carrying tubes. Uh, but other than that, gear seems to be pretty much locked in. Don't really have any concerns about anything right now at this point. So anyway, I'll put a link in the description to uh, Lighter Pack, which will have uh, a detailed outline of all the gear and its actual weight for each of those items. So I am... Uh, at mile 10 I mentioned, and it's about 11.30, and I think I only have about 3, 3.7 miles, 3.5 by now. So check in later, bye. This is a 13 mile check in, and I am, uh, it's about 12.30 in the afternoon, and about 0.7 miles to the 88 store. So almost done. So I thought I'd take a minute and reflect on the last four days some of my key learnings and I guess takeaways from uh, the hike. So some of the key learnings, I think I gear, you know, is, is, was checked. I think that's good. Um, hiking solo, and it really was solo. I know on the Colorado Trail, I probably won't be by myself all the time. There's a lot of people on that trail. So this was pretty isolated. I have seen very, very few people in the last four days. So I think that was good. Um, have no concerns or, or problems with uh, hiking solo, sleeping out in the woods solo, etc. It's always better when you have someone else with you to share the adventure. Uh, but, you know, at least I know now that I can do it. And I know my wife would love to go if she could, but she's going to set this one out. And then we've got um, a lot of exciting plans uh, after the Colorado Trail. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. I don't want to talk about it now, but we've got a lot of uh, adventures coming up here soon. So I think as far as takeaways, I need to uh, figure out my pillow situation. I know that sounds minor, but it's an important thing. You got to get a good night's sleep um, or it can be miserable. So I need to work on that, research that a little bit. And uh, also the uh electrolytes i i brought some electrolytes it's supposed to be some type of fruit flavored but i've never tasted any fruit that tastes like that um so that was kind of uh discouraging i think it's important you drink a lot of water and i think it's important um some of the water that you get even though it's filtered especially here in florida um you know even though it's for, uh, filtered it still has a taste to it and it's nice to have some type of uh, flavoring to uh, make that appealing. Otherwise, you find yourself not drinking as much as what you should be. And you get dehydrated. So, you need to uh, find a good electrolyte, something to add to water. Um, another, I think, takeaway is food. I know that I overpacked for this trip. I recently joined um, Backcountry Foodie. Uh, Aaron, who's a backpacker, through hiker nutritionist, has a really good website, um, and I joined that website. I just haven't had an opportunity to go in and spend much time there, but she's got tons of recipes uh, based upon good food that's good for you from a nutritional perspective. Also, things that are easy to prepare before and during uh, a lot of the uh, uh, store shopping list. Everything's all on the website. So I need to spend more time and really research that because I know a lot of times, um, you know, you're just running through a convenience store to restock and it's helpful to kind of know what to pull and what to put together to, to make good tasting meals, which is important 
So food is another area. I think I took too much. It was all, I thought, extremely heavy. And it also created a lot of trash that I just had to pack out with me. So food's another um, kind of takeaway that I need to follow up on. But other than that, I think that, uh, I think it's been extremely helpful to spend the last four days hiking on the uh, Ocala National Park. If you're ever in Florida or come down to Florida, highly recommend hiking anywhere in the Ocala National Park. Um, today's hike was really nice. I know there's a lot of different sections that are really nice. A lot of them I haven't done yet or been to yet, um, but would we'll like to do at some point. But anyway, it's a great adventure just to get out to uh, do a day hike or even an overnight backpacking trip. Uh, well worth it. I think you'd enjoy it. So anyway, I am almost to the 88 store and looking forward to uh, finishing this and heading home. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Well, I just wanted to close this one out. Uh, it's about 13.70 uh, miles for the day. So good day's work and um, just about to the uh, 88 store now. So just wanted to wrap this video up. So thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the last four days. I know for me it was extremely hard and different. Uh, I was quite used to taking these videos home and doing voiceover and editing them and retakes and so on and so on. So, you know, this one here will not be that way. It's basically whatever I screwed up and said um, is what makes the video. So um, thanks again for watching and we will catch you on the next Sprig adventure. So long. Okay, news flash, uh, breaking news for those that are keeping score. Actually, I must have, I don't know if I took the wrong turn or not, but I ended up down the road from uh, the 88 store, so I had to do a little road walk up to it. So that added a little bit of uh, time and miles. So it looks like it should be right up here on the right hand side, which ends the day at about 14.22 miles. So until the next time, bye bye.